Alléluia. C'est dans le plaisir. Euh. We want to welcome each and everyone. We are very glad to have you with us. Please turn to your neighbor and shake his hand very warmly. I say you are welcome in this gathering. <clears throat> Let us pray. Blessed Father, thank you for your manifest presence here right now. Father, Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, minister as you alone can minister to the hearts, to the needs of your children here gathered. And take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I I will start just by giving my testimony briefly. Um, how I was saved from despair, from bondage to the glorious freedom that is found in Jesus Christ. As a young man, I, coming from a very religious family, my father was a personal friend to uh, a priest, Father Bohn, a German, a gentleman above the 60s. He had a very big beard, white, uh, and he was tall, and he was always wearing these uh, white robes and with a, 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 a black rope going right down almost to the ground. <laughs> and I loved that. When he came to the village, he would sleep in our father's house, in my father's house. And the only good bed that was there was my parents' bed. So my parents would quit their bed and their bedroom and come and manage in our own children's room and Father Bone will sleep there. And uh, my father desired that one day I would be a, a, a father, a, 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 a priest. And uh, because yeah, he really admired him. So I was shocked. I said, who is this man? When he, whenever he comes, that's the only person for whom my parents who leave their room, I was quite young, three, four, five. And he was coming almost every quarter. <clears throat> and I grew up in that atmosphere of uh, the fear of God. My father used to sing the Latin, Latin uh, hymns. Romnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. My, my, my father would sing, 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 sing. Even when we were farming, he was, when he rested, he would sing, sing, sing. <laughs> But then I went, to, uh, I went to secondary school after my first li school living certificate. And that school was not founded by Father Bone, was founded by another priest. Uh, but when I, I went to that school, then sin started manifesting real hard in my life. And uh, I will not go into details. But uh, I could not recognize myself. Now, I was away from my parents' home. I was staying now with a cousin. I was relatively free. I was uh, 
Give children freedom and they will know what is in their heart. I'm telling you, the children may not be, that's why uh, I, I thank God for this church, for this ministry, because the ministry to children is very effective. Uh, very, very effective. Uh, I'm very, it's, it's something scarce, it's not just a religious activity. Uh, you know, there's, there was a, there's a, a, a young man, I, I was praying, I woke, I wake up really, uh, generally at three uh, or four. Then I, he, when I woke up at, by five, he came down and he, he was staying with us for some reason. Uh, you know him, it, he's, it's Wesley. <laughs> so he, he, sat, he sat there on the couch and I was on the table. I was reading my Bible and praying. I sat there quiet. And I, I noticed he was talking. Talking, but talking with a, a, a low tune. I said, no, Wesley, speak out. What are you saying? He said it again in American English. He didn't get it. I said, Wesley, repeat it. He, he said, my dad, my dad said he's a man of God. But he's only gone to church once. <laughs> my dad says he's a man of God. So... That young man was comparing me and his dad. <laughs> and the other day he came, uh, we shall just chat there because uh, we shall soon stop. Some of us are going somewhere. So, <laughs> so the other day he came and then he said, uh, no, and then I said, Wesley, come and we prayed for his dad. We prayed for, I said, you pray this way for your dad every day. Amen. Your dad needs prayers. Your dad needs deliverance. You pray this way and you see a change. So I, told, I gave him three prayer topics. I said, Father, reveal your son Jesus Christ to my dad so that he may know him. Say it again. Father God, reveal your son Jesus Christ to my dad. I said, your dad needs freedom. I needed freedom. I needed deliverance. Uh, soon I went to university when I went to university, the whole dream of being a priest started winning away, disappearing. Then uh, I did not know how to confront my father, <laughs> who still thought that I could be a priest. You see, I, 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 will commit, I, will leave, I will commit some sin and go and repent to some other priest and come, to, come back to attend the mass where that other priest that did not know me was officiating. So hypocrisy came in. I was addicted with sex, alcohol, even cigarette. Because I was very empty inside. Addicted. In fact, when I, 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 I cannot tell you how, how it was. I could not, sometimes I wake up at 1 o'clock in the night. So what, what am I doing here? Go to a nightclub drink and then go it was a miserable life very very miserable but one day i heard the gospel Amen. i heard the gospel preached with such authority by dr lizzie's daddy uh, uh, I, I said I, I turned to my neighbor i said i never heard the gospel like this but he himself was caught up. He did not answer me. <laughs> because it was very, very powerful. He was preaching on Naaman, the leopard. The leopard who pretended to be a general, admired, and followed, and given orders. But he was a leopard, covering his life, hypocrisy, bondage. He preached very... I, I, I've never heard such a thing. So he said, whoever wants to give his life to this Jesus and take him as Lord, let him come in front and kneel down. Uh, I, he said, you come in front and kneel. And the place where we were kneeling, was, there was no carpet. It, the, I mean, the floor was not even cemented. You know, uh, the first obili. The first was just, who, who knows that obili? Yeah, 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 yeah. Be, that, that, and then we came and knelt there. Say, because Jesus is Lord. Amen. I want to tell you this day that what John wrote, 
if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. If the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. As I woke up from kneeling there, the chain, I mean, there's this song that says the chains fell off. Let me tell you, I've never been the same person again. It was on the 20th of November, 1982. Wow. By 9.40 in the evening. As I finished there and I walked home, my wife was already sleeping. We just got married. We were married uh, three months earlier. I woke, up, I woke her up to repent because it was already quite tough. We were wondering whether, how far we would go. <laughs> I repented on my knees. I said, please forgive me this, 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 this. Then my life totally changed from there. One week later, I got baptized in water. Uh, shortly later, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And all the bondages, all the problems, all the addictions, alcohol, cigarette, women, uh, became so, it, it became so disgusting. In fact, I was repenting in tears. I say, what is this type of madness that can send a young man to be intoxicating himself with cigarette? to be intoxicating myself with alcohol, and to, to go, I mean, to live a dark life, it was with very hot tears. I wept for a number of days. I repented from sin, and my life changed. The only thing I want to tell you that is that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. The same Jesus who set, who set me free 41 years ago is alive and is right here. And if you just turn to him and say, Lord, you are alive. Let's bend down our heads. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are alive. You died for our sins and you were buried three days after. You rose from the dead. And behold, you are alive. You are alive right here. You are alive on this earth. You are seated at the right hand of God. You are praying for us. And your word says, your invitation is, come to me, all you labor, and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Lord, it is all about you. This meeting is all about you. The worship was all about Jesus. Our whole lives are all about Jesus. Miracle Center is all about Jesus. Your Lordship is central here. I believe in you. And this day, I pray that your power will manifest in my life in freedom. I turn from any sin, not by my own power, but by your spirit. And I thank you. For now I am saved. Now I am free. Amen. Amen. It is as simple as that. Uh, Christian life is all about Jesus. Christian life is all about Jesus. You give God the permission to recreate you, to make you a new creation by inviting Jesus in your life as Lord. You give God, because God is a legalist, you give God the permission to remake you, to regenerate you, to recreate you, to give you a new start by inviting Jesus in your life as Lord. If he's not as Lord, he's not, he will not come. If Jesus is not Lord of all in your life, he's not Lord at all. If Jesus will not come, if you don't desire him to come to be Lord of all, 
Lord of your time, Lord of your body, Lord of your money, Lord of your programs, your agendas, Lord of your every day. If you will not come as Lord and God sees the heart, if you will come as Lord, then he comes. He comes in love. Love, the principle of love is freedom. You decide to invite him to make him Lord, and you'll be amazed the deliverance, the ministry, the love that he will manifest in your love. You'll be very much amazed. So we shall just talk about uh, briefly about Jesus for the next 10 minutes. By 12, we shall stop. Amen. We could stop at 10, at, at 12, or at 3. <laughs> uh, we shall, see, you see, if you are stopping at 3, we, we go through these three sheets. Hmm? There are even four. If you are t stopping at 12, we keep, we keep these ones, and we only use one. Amen? So, uh, all in Christian life is Jesus. You invite him as Lord and he comes. Amen? Then you learn to know him and he reveals himself to you by the Holy Spirit. Now, what we shall, the aspect that we shall see of Jesus today is his ministry of comfort. His ministry of comfort. Jesus' ministry of comfort. Uh, we were to talk about the goals, but uh, the theme of goals, the goals for 2024, is too big that I would not like to tackle it if we not finish it. Let's just see the Jesus' ministry of comfort. Um, his ministry of comfort during his days in the flesh. Matthew chapter 9, verse 22. Matthew 9, 22. You know the story uh, from verse 21. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Let's read it again. But Jesus turned around. And when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Amen. Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Be of good cheer, son. Be of good cheer, son. Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. You know the story of this woman who had been sick for 12 years, who was losing blood, and who heard about Jesus, and who followed in the crowd. So it was not difficult to make her way through the crowd, the, the crowd of people. So he, she was uh, forcing her way between people. And she had many, many, many obstacles on her way. The first obstacle was the law of Moses. That say that 
if any woman has an issue of blood, she must not appear, she must not touch anybody. And she knew it very well. And if she touches somebody, she makes the person unclean. She soils the person. She knew it. But she went, ignored the law of Moses, did violence to herself, forced her way, touched many, many people, I don't know how many people she made unclean. <laughs> but she didn't care. There must come a time when you don't care. Amen. Because from the days of John the Baptist says Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And the violence take it by force. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God... You, uh, you uh, people, you know, be walking and tumble on the kingdom of God as uh, you tumble on a coin of gold. No. This, uh, this uh, deliverance I'm sharing about came after seven days of uh, hearing the gospel preached every evening. I had to do myself violence. Because as I told you before, my wife was totally against my going there. She said, don't go there. Those are the born again. They are very dangerous. <laughs> you see, you see they're, they're, you know, we used to call the born again, uh, uh, you know, the, this gum that catches uh, rats. Yeah. So when they catch you, <laughs> don't be going there. <laughs> that is a contradiction of life. You know, the sinner would prefer her sinful husband than a believing husband. <laughs> but when she came to understand, of course, that was ignorance. You must do some violence to yourself. I had never heard somebody preach with such violence. The stage was high. And, and he was preaching on Naaman, how Naaman was plunging into water. So he will jump as Naaman jumped into water and came back and preached again and preached again and preached again. So he jumped how many times? Seven times. I'd never heard it. In fact, that was the summit of the preaching. I remember the messages. The first message was on Nicodemus. The second message was on Roman 5. For why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I, I, I knew the messages. I did not take note, but I was so touched, so marked. You know why? Because of pray. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. If the Son will set you free, you must do violence to yourself. Because he himself did violence to himself. He left his throne in heaven and came, humbled himself on earth for 33 years, exposed himself for uh, utter suffering and agony and shame, died and went to hell, did the violence to himself that no one, I mean, no one can ever beat him. So, Love, that violent love, that costly love must be reciprocated Amen. by the same response, the same kind of response. You don't do the same thing, but God sees your heart, sees your desire. As I knelt down and my knees were paining me, I knew that it was finished with immorality. It was the end of drunkenness, nightclubs, bars, vanity and all the useless things. I knew there. I mean, that very evening, I just kneeling there and say, okay, now it is finished. For the Bible says, and he was repeating it, uh, 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 Second Corinthians 5, 17, if anybody be in Christ, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed and behold, the new has come. Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, the, the ministry of comfort of Jesus Christ was also a ministry of evangelism. Amen. Let's read again 
in Luke chapter 5, verse 13. Luke 5, 13. Luke chapter 5, verse 13. Let's read from uh, verse 12. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus. And he held on his face, he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Amen. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Amen. Be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 when you are reading the Bible, often um, uh, uh, envision the scene. Uh, the man was full of leprosy. Horrible. Then science has, had not made the progress that it has made of recent. The man was full of leprosy, which means that the, 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 the wounds were open. Which means that the stench was great. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether you've ever seen a leper. The man was full of leprosy from head to toe. Leprosy attacks your eyes, your nose, your fingers, your whole body. And the man said, if you will, you can make me, if you are willing. Jesus did not answer him with words. Amen. Jesus answered him by, uh, with a touch, Amen. a touch of love. Amen. I want to tell us that Jesus has not changed. He is still willing. No sin, no condition can cause Jesus, can push Jesus away from the needy. If you are willing, said the man, you can cleanse me. And Jesus reached out to him and cleansed him. He says, I'm, the Bible says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What's your need? What is your need? Please, let's bend down our heads again. Present your need to the Lord. What is your need? Is it healing? Not all, is he not, he's not only willing. He's eager. He's, he desires to reach out to you and to heal you. So you close your eyes for the Lord Jesus Christ is here. And say, Lord, I know, I understand you are willing. Look at the condition of my body. Consider this sickness. It is not on, from you. Reach out to me with a touch of love and of power. after me Lord Jesus your word says that by your stripes I am healed of any diseases I am healed in my body and in my soul and right now I claim that healing because you paid the price I confess I am healed. And because I'm healed, I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ and command all symptoms and command all pain to depart, to stop now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's read the last passage, Mark chapter 5, verse 36. Mark 5:36 You know the story of Jairus <clears throat> 
while Jesus was still speaking, he is Jesus. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. Verse 30. Verse 37. And he, he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult. And those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. Amen. We know what happened later. He raised the child. We want to say that our God is not indifferent to the needs of the needy. God is not indifferent to our needs at all. Jesus is not indifferent to your need, to my need. As, as we said, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not indifferent to your need. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Let's say it together. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Discard any fear. Even if it is death, physical death, discard any, get rid of any fear. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Amen? Amen. Shall we read another passage? John chapter 14 from verse 1. John 14, we shall, it, it will be long, uh, from verse 1 to 18. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, says the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. Verse 8, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Verse 9, Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10, Do you not believe that I have been the Father and the Father in me, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. 
verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. We are talking about the ministry of comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ, just to comfort us, to encourage us, that no matter our condition, no matter the circumstances that trouble our hearts, we can confide ourselves to Jesus. We can open up to Jesus. We can speak to Jesus. We can lean on him. We can trust in him. We can believe that he is available, he is alive, and he's more than willing to help and succor us. Amen? Amen. We had a very blessed time yesterday, um, fellowshipping and uh, ministering mutually to each other uh, in our home. Uh, we still want to thank the brethren who came. And those who did not come, we forgive you. Amen. We we forgive you. Uh, it was a, such a blessed time that instead of blaming you, we are instead sorry for you. <laughs> we, we, we will not blame you. We know that next time when there is a men's meeting, you will come rushing. <laughs> we missed uh, some of you uh, there. Uh, but I want to especially thank the sisters who really worked hard, Sister Christine worked very hard. Dr. Liz brought us much food. Sister Lydian, uh, Sister Dorcas brought. <laughs> I cannot name them. Sister Lynn, thanks so much. It was a, a good time of fellowship. I want to inform the church that the men shall no longer be lagging behind. Amen. They will take their responsibility and take the lead Amen. because leadership belongs to us. We shall not allow anybody to usurp it from us. Uh, we know that when it turns bad, God will not call Sarah, he will call Abraham. Uh, when things go wrong, you will not call Eve, you call Adam. <laughs> so we are shouldering our responsibility in a new way. Uh, it will be, maybe the next time it will be a retreat. We want to encourage the brethren to come. It was very, very much enriching. We received ministry from Dr. Ray, ministry from uh, uh, Elder Johnson, ministry from uh, Pastor Charles. I mean, we had, it was so rich, so very much enriching. And uh, ministry and Bishop came, though he came a bit late together with, uh, and ministered to us finally. So it was very, very rich. It was something not to miss. It turned out to be much bigger than we were thinking. So uh, I think this sharing creates some desire in your heart such that next time when there is the men's ministry, you will be there. Amen. Praise God. Um, I would like us to stand up. We shall just make some proclamation concerning the year that has started. And that would be the end. A successful year is 365 successful days. Amen. A successful year is 365 successful days. 52 success, successful weeks. Amen. What is a successful day? A successful day is the day where the Lord has indeed been Lord in your life. Amen. Where the Lord has reigned Amen. in your life, in your home, in uh, your projects, in whatever you are doing. 
A successful day is a day started with the Lord. Amen. And because he's the Alpha and the Omega. A, su a successful day is a day in invested. In fact, we talked about investment. Dr. Ray taught, taught, taught us about uh, the nine, were there seven or nine? nine. And th there was one where I ad identified myself, the spirit of investment. A day which, which you are in which you have invested. A day that you will see in eternity because you, we only see every day twice. You see it now, you go through it, and you again see you will again see it in eternity. When you see it in eternity, you will thank God for it. A successful day is the day where you can hear the Holy Spirit say, Well done. Well done, my son. <laughs> Amen. So we shall speak success to our days in 2024. Say, in the name of Jesus. And you proclaim it with authority. In the name of Jesus. I proclaim that I am a child of God. I am born of God. All of us, let's proclaim, I'm born of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I proclaim that I'm a son of the kingdom. That God dwells in me. Jesus dwells in me. Jesus dwells in the Spirit dwells in me. In me. Father, Son, and Holy, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost dwell in me. And in me they will and they do according to their pleasure. They will and do according to their pleasure. Every day of 2024. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Rule, in my life. rule in my life, guide my life, guide my life. Enlighten, my life. enlighten my life, enrich my life, enrich my life. Strengthen, my life. strengthen my life, bless my life. Bless my life. I, proclaim I proclaim that the way is open, the way is open. By, the by the Holy Spirit for me to move therein. I hear, I hear the Holy Spirit every day say, every day say here, is here is the way, walk ye in, walk ye in. in, the, name in the name of Jesus, I proclaim, I proclaim that, I that I am under the protection of myriads of angels, of of angels. that I move, I move every day of 2024. In angelic, escort, in angelic escort, I drive, I drive. In, angelic in angelic escort, I sleep, I sleep. Under, angelic under angelic protection, I go out, I go out. And, the and the angels precede me, and they accompany me, they accompany in the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus. I, proclaim I proclaim that there shall be no failure. In 2024, in the name of Jesus, I resist any attacks from demons. I am a son of God. I am a servant of men. I am a terror to demons. I terrorize them. The fire of God emanates from me and burns them and they disperse. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim that all my needs are provided for. My spiritual needs are abundantly provided for. My material needs are provided for. I proclaim that all my financial needs are provided for. My needs are for ministry. I provided for. I am a financer of the gospel. My projects are successful. My projects are all successful. In all my home, all shouts glory. In my home, everything shouts glory. Glory to God. My life is pleasing to God. 
My life is a blessing to the saints. My life is a model that will inspire the saints. My character grows in Christ likeness. I grow in Christ likeness. I think like Christ. I speak like Christ. I do like Christ. I act like Christ. Christ's motives and agenda are my motives and agenda. In 2024, I proclaim that I will, I will win souls. I will win souls for Christ. I will share the gospel. The Spirit will lead me to the right persons. And I will share the gospel with them. They will get baptized in water. They will join the church. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will equip me. And he's equipping me to make disciples in 2024. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll step up my time with the Lord. I'll step up my giving to the Lord. I'll step up my ministry to the Lord. I'll step up my ministry to the brethren. I step up my ministry to my friends. I step up my ministry to my partner. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim that 2024, I have an appointment with the blessings of the Lord. I have an appointment, an unfailing appointment with the blessings of the Lord. It shall be with me that way and no other. It shall be that way and no other. And the church says amen. And the church says amen. Praise God, I give. Come on, shout amen. amen. It shall be so, amen. amen. You can take your seats, hallelujah. Those are proclamations to keep praying and declaring.